Okay, the sutta tonight is the Satipatthana Sutta, the foundations of mindfulness. Thus have I heard on one occasion the Blessed One was living in the Kuru country, where there was a town of the Kurus named Kasa Sadama, where he addressed the monks thus, Monks, Venerable Sir, they replied, the Blessed One said this, Monks, this is the direct path for the purification of beings for the surmounting of sorrow and lamentation, for the disappearance of pain and grief, for the attainment of the true way, for the realization of Nibbana, namely the four foundations of mindfulness. What are the four? Here, monks, a monk abides contemplating the body as a body, ardent, fully aware, and mindful having put away covetousness and grief for the world. He abides contemplating feelings as feelings. This translation says feelings as feelings, but we got to take the S off of that because it's way too misunderstood. So we want to say feeling as feeling. Ardent, fully aware and mindful, having put away covetousness and grief for the world. He abides contemplating mind as mind. Ardent, fully aware and mindful, having put away covetousness and grief for the world. He abides contemplating mind objects as mind objects, ardent, fully aware and mindful, having put away covetousness and grief for the world. Now the first part is the contemplation of the body, and it starts out with mindfulness of breathing. An interesting thing is that the instructions of mindfulness of breathing are exactly word for word, letter for letter, the same. Here, as it is in the Anapanasati Sutta, the Kaya Nupasana, Mindfulness of Body Sutta, and Sutta number 62, where the Buddha gives instructions in mindfulness of breathing. So these instructions are pretty much standardized through all of the different kinds of meditation. And how monks, does a monk abide contemplating the body as a body? Here a monk, gone to the forest or to the root of a tree or an empty hut, sits down, having folded his legs crosswise, set his body erect, and establish mindfulness in front of him. Ever mindful, he breathes in, mindful, he breathes out. Breathing in long, he understands, I breathe in long. Or, breathing out long, he understands, I breathe out long. Breathing in short, he understands, I breathe in short. Or, breathing out short, he understands, I breathe out short. The key word to this part of the instructions is he understands. He knows when he's taking a long breath and when it's short. He knows when the breath is very fine and when it's coarse. He knows when it's subtle and when it's not. He understands. It doesn't say he focuses on. He doesn't say he puts his strong attention only on the breath. It says he understands the breath. And again, you want to notice that it doesn't say nostril tip, nostril, upper lip, or abdomen, or any combination of those. You just understand what the breath is doing in the present moment. Now, he trains thus. These are key words because this is the actual instruction in the meditation itself. I shall breathe in experiencing the whole body. In the first edition of the Middle Link saying, Bhikkhu Bodhi, I talked to him about this, he was obliged to put in brackets of breath behind experiencing the whole body. That was when Yanapanika was still alive, and Yanapanika was Bhikkhu Bodhi's teacher, so he felt obliged to put that in. After Yanapanika died, he came out with a second edition, and he took of breath out because it's misleading. If you put of breath 
behind experiencing the entire body. It implies that you're focusing very deeply just on the breath to the exclusion of everything else, which is a form of absorption concentration. But you'll see in a moment that that is not the case. So when he came out with a second edition, he took that out in every place except the Mindfulness of Breathing Sutta. <laughs> he forgot to take it out in that one, but he took it out everywhere else. He trains thus, I shall breathe out experiencing the whole body. He trains thus, I shall breathe in tranquilizing the bodily formation. He trains thus, I shall breathe out tranquilizing the bodily formation. Now, this is the entire instructions in the meditation of how to do mindfulness of breathing. I have had many, many discussions with many, many monks who are practicing meditation and teaching meditation. And I say, well, how do you practice mindfulness of breathing? Well, I put my attention on my nostril or upper lip, and I keep my attention there very strongly. Now, that doesn't match the instructions of he trains thus. He trains thus tranquilizing the bodily formation on the in-breath and tranquilizing the bodily formation on the out-breath. They're just taking the breath without the tranquilizing. This last part of the instructions is the very thing that makes the Buddha's meditation different from everybody else's teaching. All of the Brahmins and Hindus of the time, they were doing breath meditation, but they were focusing just on the breath. They didn't put that extra step of tranquilizing the bodily formation. Now, what does tranquilizing the bodily formation mean? Most people, especially in this country, when you talk to them about the body, to them the body is from the neck down, and the mind is from the neck up, when in fact the body is from the top of the head all the way down. Now, when it says tranquilize the bodily formation, what it's talking about is there is subtle tensions and tightnesses in your head, in your mind, in your brain. You relax on the in-breath, you feel an opening and a calming. You relax on the out-breath, you feel an opening and a calming. Opening and calming. You're using the breath as the reminder to relax, to tranquilize your bodily formation. Now, this means also that if there's any tension anywhere in your body, if you see that tension, you relax that, also relaxing this. The subtle tightness that's in your head is also a tightness in your mind. So you're actually tranquilizing both the bodily formation and the mental formation by relaxing. 